Hi everyone, my name is Sam Cafferty. I'm an Applications Engineer here with QTE, part of our Mastercam team. And today I want to demo for you a new add-on product called uh, Cam Assist from a company called CloudNC. So this is a fully supported add-on through Mastercam. And what it does is it's basically an AI-enabled uh, programming solution that can help you automatically put toolpaths on your part. Uh, you can program things, you can do cycle time estimations, and you also can take advantage of their Cutting Parameters Explorer where you can easily change uh, cutting parameters for different kinds of operations. You can choose between tool life versus production efficiency and really have a lot of control over your tool paths and how they're created. So today I'm going to demo the Cam Assist product for you. So I've got a part set up here. One cool thing about Cam Assist is that it can actually take advantage of multiple setups. So I've got my OP1 on this side with my plane and my fixture. And my OP2 is going to be this back side here. And I've also added a chamfer and a fillet so we can see that it can take advantage of the uh, full suite of 3D toolpaths within Mastercam as well. So this is a full three axis solution as well as three plus two machining which we'll showcase in another video. So for three axis machining it's going to use the uh, Cam Assist tool library by default. So this is something that Cam Assist provides. You can see we've got uh, cutting tools here, assemblies here, and also using the cut parameters function in the tool library. So I've got my 3 16 end mill 22106. I can put it in an assembly so it's got a holder, stick out. I can check this for collisions or uh, depth of cut. And then I've got several different cut parameters uh, described here for that tool. So 22106 can do flat finishing, helical boring, and wall finishing. And each of those is going to have an associated surface speed and feed rate. So now let's look at how the software actually works. So I'm going to go to my Cloud NC tab here. Each of these parts has got stock set up. It's got the uh, solid selected as our master model and we have work holding enabled as well. So Cam Assist can, can uh, respect work holding. It's not going to ding your jaws or your fixtures if you have those in Mastercam as avoidance geometry. So I've got my two machine groups set up here. I'm going to click on the Cloud NC Cam Assist and choose the Cam Assist here. You can see I've got my two setups. So my setup is OP1 and then for my second plane I'm going to use OP2. I'm using that Cam Assist Inch tool database, but you can choose from any of the tool databases that are on your computer by using the File button here. I'm going to tell it what kind of material I'm using so it knows what feeds and speeds to choose. We'll use aluminum for this case. And I have some control over my machine. So in this case, I'm going to set that I don't want to go anything over 10,000 RPM. I'm using 3-axis mode. This is the maximum feed that I want to describe. And then I can choose how good my work holding is. So maybe for OP2, I'm going to keep it uh, using 5 eighths as the largest tool, but for OP1, I'm going to use a half inch rougher just because of the amount that I have clamped down here. Then we'll go over to our tool usage here, and this is where we can take advantage of the Cloud NC cutting parameters. So for aluminum, we have all these uh, parameters filled in in the tool database as we saw. And if you want to use those, you can select this. The best option is here. Use feeds and speeds from the selected tool library if they're available. Otherwise, Cam Assist will generate them. So this way, if you change your material to something that does not have the Cam Assist feeds and speeds, like stainless or titanium, it's going to use their cutting parameters from the cloud. And these are verified uh, cutting parameters from a lot of data that they've gathered over the years. And it's going to give you a great starting point on your feeds and speeds for your tools. And finally, under the Advanced tab here, we can choose the different types of tool paths that we want. I'm just going to leave all of these on. We can change the stock to leave for finishing. So 10 thousandths is a little bit small. Let's maybe put that at 25 thousandths. And then we can choose how we want to do our finishing and that kind of thing. So I'm going to leave it on area mill, water line, and chamfer for deburring. We can change all these later because we can edit the tool pass. And from there, I'm just going to click the green check. And it's going to begin running Cam Assist. So it's going to collect the part data, the models, and the fixturing. It's going to send those up to the cloud, crunch it on their computers, and then create the tool pass required to run in Mastercam.
and you'll see those pop up shortly. All right, so Cam Assist has finished running. We're going to get this warning uh, on the first part that we run that the toolpath has been checked against the selected tool holder. So this is just letting you know that uh, this, is, this has been collision checked against the holder since we do have a full holder mockup in our tool library. So I'm just going to click the do not show again on the warning and hit the green check to finish. All right, and now Cam Assist is all finished. Obviously, it does take a moment to crunch all of these toolpaths, so we just dropped 31 operations into a master cam file, so they have to regen just like any other toolpath would. So it does take just a moment to run, but at the end we see we have Cam Assist completed, generated 27 operations, machining 83 of 83 surfaces. So all 83 surfaces of this part have been machined, basically between our OP1 and our OP2. And then the 27 operations is the Operations here, obviously stock models do not count towards that. That's why there's 31 in the toolpath tree and 27 actual operations. So we just click OK. Let our final uh, dynamic toolpath down there finish. And so what Cam Assist recommends is that this is basically what they call an 80% solution. So is it going to be the best toolpath every single time? Not necessarily, but we have a lot of easy ways to edit things in MasterCam, and that's what's nice about kind of combining their technology with the existing technology that's already in MasterCam. So for our OP1 here, if I just put my insert arrow here, we'll go look at it real quick in uh, Simcoe Verify. So check my setup. We're going to use our Haas VF2, automatically set up our work holding. So let's just start Verify. So here's our part that we programmed using Cam Assist. I'm just going to jump to the end of the program. And you can see that we have a fully machined part. Turn off our workpiece and see the difference here. So it's machined, it's chamfered. We've done the uh, 3D surfacing here. And anytime you see you know, a little gouge or something like that, that just means that we need to tweak the toolpath parameters just a little bit. So for example, it tends to use waterline. I'm going to go back in here to this 3D high speed. And I'm going to change this to maybe like an equal scallop. So because it's a master cam toolpath, we can easily go back in and edit after the fact. Do my counterclockwise spiral. We'll go top to bottom instead. And I'm just going to set this at a rather large scallop height just so it's easy to see what the toolpath is doing. We'll click OK. And it's going to regen just like any other master cam file. So you can go back in and quite easily edit things that need to be changed to your preference or how you like to run things in your shop. And then your toolpaths, all of this stuff is already done for you. You don't have to choose avoidance regions. You don't have to put boundaries on anything. It's going to do that automatically. And there's our new 3D finish pass. So one other cool thing about Cam Assist is that we have the option to use their Cutting Parameters Explorer. So I can right click on any operation, go back in and regenerate it using uh, their, uh, their functionality for cutting parameters. So I can right click on this first Opti rough, come down here to the Cutting Parameters Explorer. And I can see that it's going to run at 10,000 RPM, 134 inches a minute. This is my step over and my step down. And it tells me what kind of tool I'm using. So in this case, it's a half-inch roughing tool with a 10,000th corner radius. Let's say that I want to stick with a more typical OptiRough kind of style step over, dynamic step over, at about 30% of my tool diameter. So I can come in here and click lock value on my width of cut and actually type in what I want it to be. So maybe 175 thousandths, something like that. Let's say that I also want to do my depth of cut at no more than one and a half times my tool diameter. You can see as I'm changing these values, it's also changing my step over, step down. It's going to change my feed per tooth. It's going to change the feed to match. And I have all these options of what I want to change. 
tool deflection. I can change my work holding security, how much material, how much torque. There's a lot of control here. And when I click Save Operation, these values are going to be automatically put into that operation. I can regenerate it here. Once it's done regenerating, click on my parameters, and I can see if I go to my cut parameters that the numbers that I put in, the 175,000 step over, the 75, uh, uh, 750,000 step down, these have been ported into the toolpath and then it regenerates based on those options. So you have a lot of control of what the tool is actually doing inside of Cutting Parameters Explorer even after it's been programmed using KM Assist. So now I'll regenerate the rest of my operations here so we can look at the OP2 side. All right, so that's done regenerating. Let's look at the OP2 side. So I'm going to flip over to my machine group 2. I can see this is my stock left over from OP1. So we've got a fully machined part on the bottom, but we've obviously got this material on top. And that's because Canvas has generated stock models as well. So it's going to generate this stock model 3. This is based on the previous operations from our previous stock model. Then we do our OptiRef passes here, some rest passes on that, and obviously finish it out as well. Once again, we'll check it out here in Simcoe Verify. And there's the backside. So you can see we've got our model chamfers done. It's going to machine this uh, kind of shallow chamfer here using a waterline toolpath. And we've done two setups in one in just a few minutes. Fully programmed, ready to go. All you need to do now is you know set your NC file names, post out the code, and you're in good shape. So it's a really powerful tool easy to use, easy to train on, and once you uh, get used to using it, it's super simple to go back in and just edit the things that you know you want to edit. If you decide you don't need nearly as much roughing, just go ahead and you know delete toolpaths. It doesn't hurt anything to do that. It's going to do all the contours for you, cutter comp enabled, correct direction. It's not going to gouge anything. It's even smart enough to know when to helix bore. It can spot drill do your main drills, and the order of operations is going to come out so that you're not going to cause a crash and so that the least material removal has to happen later on down the line. So it's a really smart tool. Uh, it's got some, some really powerful uh, programming behind it, and it can be a great solution for your shop. So if you've got any questions, uh, please reach out to us at QTE Manufacturing Solutions or contact your uh, sales engineer, and we'll be happy to assist you with that. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of the day.